Arch Linux or rather I say Arch Linux whatever you call but you know this distro or this specific distribution is considered hard hardest Linux to install is Arch Linux this is a common uh, common theory between uh, new Linux users or even um, even intermediate users that Arc Linux is quite hard to install but is it really that hard like people assume that oh my god is this uh, this is impossible I can't I can't just do it is it really that hard I don't think so because there are easy ways every problem has a solution and I'm not telling this is a problem but if you think this is a problem then I might have a solution for you in this video I will install Arch Linux easily in in an easy way for beginners so what are the prerequisites for um, installing Arch Linux well this as you are seeing is a virtual box um, I'm using a virtual machine because I have not found a way to record the screen of i don't think that there is a way that exists to uh, record the screen uh, in while you are installing from a terminal from a uh, from from something that uh, provides you like nothing but a shell to install and you can't install apps there well so that's what i'm speaking about so uh, you need to download the virtual arch linux iso and burn it into a USB using some device using some upper software like HR whose link I will give in the description below and also the Arch Linux ISO I will give the uh, link in the description below and be sure to check the description so you just uh, insert the pen drive uh, the bootable USB basically or CD DVD and just boot into it from the boot menu i hope you know what your system boot menu uh, shortcut is then uh, you can dual boot it you can uh, you can just erase the disk and move it so there are quite um, numerous ways to do it but in this video what we are gonna do is we are gonna just show you i'm gonna show you how to install arch linux easily and after this video i bet that you will install arch linux easily without any problem now so this is what you get the screen when you uh, when you boot into uh, the arch linux from boot menu so now you need to go for the first one it will load it first so till it's opening so this is how you are welcomed in Arch Linux so this might uh, this is the point where people get scared because if, if you go to install other Linux distros then you will see there is a um, like a calamarous uh, installer or something but in this one you just get a shell well there are more distros like Artex who provide a base but mostly people prefer the GUI ones so that's why we use here a tool called ArcFi now if you never heard of ArcFi before well it's a it's a beautiful script which is made by Linux developers to install Arch Linux easily in a kind of GUI way. So what's our first step? So first step is to check if we have the internet connection. Now how to check internet connection? We can pinch a website which is google.com for example. So here my internet connection is working. Well if your internet connection is not working then proba uh, then probably because uh, it can't find your drivers obviously so if your internet connection is not working you will get another output maybe an error so for that there are other methods there if you have a wi-fi connection if you have a ethernet it's supposed to connect 
if you have a Wi-Fi connection then then what you need to do is uh, there is a command called IWCTL IWCTL here you enter IWD now here device list this is the command so here as it is a virtual box my devices nor adapters are not showing but in your physical system well there will be a name out here um, of your something like VLAN uh, WLAN 2 or something and then what you need to do is station device name which I am not doing because I have no device and scan device name sub uh, uh, device name is for you have to enter the name of your year yeah, of your adapter or whatever it's showing in the devices list now stay in, after that after it uh, starts finishes scanning station uh, device name now don't try device name it's just the it's just what I am using to show you but no like there will be something called I think LAN 0 probably but as I used the device name at the last at the uh, previous one so here also we use device name for um, avoiding confusion now device name get get networks so this will show you this this will show you how to um, um, this will show you all the uh, WLAN connections the Wi-Fi connections around you and then what you need to do is station device name device name Con connect SSID SSID is uh, is your Wi-Fi name which is your Wi-Fi name and if your Wi-Fi name consists of a capital letter then caps lock here uh, unfortunately won't work so you have to give shift suppose if my Wi-Fi name is J where J is capital so what I will do is I will just um, uh, give connect and then um, then shift plus J and uh, AY so this is what I do to connect Wi-Fi then it asks for the password and that's just how you connect to Wi-Fi it's easy well okay let me exit the IWD mode then clear now what we need to do now pacman s pac um, which is install contrib wget and these both packages are going to install now data by uh, if this error comes to you then what you need to do is pacman sy now pacman uh, now again re rerun this command now it will install it successfully this is a short install so let's just clear this now wget http arcfi.sf.net hash and sorry slash arcfi and then arcfi this is how you do it now it is connecting to the network and what it does it 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 again wget is a tool to grab files from the internet to your local computer so that's uh, that's how it works it fetches the script from the website they give and then they like uh, they then uh, store it in a file which we have gone, given the name arc file well for me the wi-fi is uh, kind of slow so it's taking some time but yeah now it's it gonna happen in time yeah so it's done now now if we list things up there is one file called arcfi and arcfi.1 well in virtual box i see that arcfi doesn't work but arcfi.1 works so 
that may be the case for you but in when i tried in physical um in my physical hard drive to install sh arc 5 worked fine now sh arc 5 dot 1 as it shows us not arc bi arc 5 yeah so it is the command now the graphical installer will start so this is the graphical installer arc 5 which is looking quite easy to be honest and here my language will be english here the keyboard layout is here i will go for us you can choose your desired one here is my us and now any key to continue disk partitions so for this i want to go for auto partitions but if you want to edit partitions like if you are on a dual boot and all then probably you should go for cf or cg disk like if i go for this then okay so there this is the whole thing and if you click new partition then uh, uh, then it will create partitions if you know what your partitions need basically it's need uh, a5 partition and there is home partition that is root partition you can just search it up in the internet and so we quit it and now we go for the auto partition because this we, we are installing on a single boot so yeah auto partitions are still good for my current case now yes now it's creating boot partition it's creating root swap now back now select partitions and install now you have to do nothing you just click enter every time it asks you because it auto partition all the stuff so that's why so that's why um let's fix this and yes so for my devices for my devices and then ext4 no I will go for FAT32 if I am uh, EFI so for the EFI systems I go um, you should go for FAT32 and I am going for EXT4 because I am on a VM so EXT4 you press any key to continue swap partition will be this and for root I prefer um, EXT4 you can go for better FS now my install and config so all the partitions are mounted now install arc linux packstrap now here you need to choose the linux kernel well lts for normal users who don't need that updates and uh, kind of stuff and this one is for kind of bleeding edge the normal linux and zen is also used well you can choose yours what you need now linux firmware this is needed so um, I'm going with Linux firmware then I'm going for DOS FFS tools the first one so now it will take some time to install all the stuff so this is uh, so this is completed now and um, some errors came here um, why okay so my wi-fi went too slow actually so we train to process once this can happen for you it's quite common but yeah these two were left here now these are done so you can just retry it, the packages which are not actually installed you can just rest uh, retry them and that will be fixed so if your Wi-Fi is also kind of slow, this can help you. Also, people ask why Arch Linux. Well, Arch Linux gives you a nice, uh, great development environment. It is, um, it is quite bleeding edge, and it has uh, so many uh, new features to try it like i first uh, moved to arch linux just to try the ea package manager which is like which is completely completely dope it is it's uh, like uh, rewards can't describe it because it's so good i prefer ea for everything 
uh, though I use Pac-Man sometimes, but still. Also, there are our tools which are quite impressive, and there are ones, numerous reasons. There are numerous reasons. But I can tell you that once you go to Arch Linux, you won't regret it. Basically, why won't you regret it? Well. Everything takes some time to get used to, but when you get a little, when you get used to at last, then it's just your time to chill and just enjoy in your OS. And Arch is possibly the only OS. No, not only. Basically, uh, not only. Um, it is the. It is one of those OSs that are. So, like, so open. You can just build it from a base. Installing Arch is like building your own OS. It's like um, building your old op own operating system. You are doing everything from roots, grassroots. Now here it's finished. So I'm pressing a key to continue. Now config Arch Linux, which is set computer name, which I will set R key here. And press any key to continue. And keyboard layout, which is again US. And then locale. Well, I'm going for time, which will probably set this already. I'm in India, so going for Asia. Asia, my time zone. Kolkata. Press any key to continue. UTC. I prefer UTC. If you have a Windows system, it's local. But I prefer you. UTC more because sometimes Windows messes up things. Now, here I am setting my password. <coughs> so, this uh, is password uh, updated successfully. Now, generate F stab, we will go for UID and bootloader we will go for grub bootloader install grub it will install grub so grub is basically it's a it helps you to boot into your system and it's necessary for, especially for people who like dual boot or multi boot or something so this is updating grub which takes some time and this is uh, as you see that this is quite easy this is not probably what you were getting results about that you are step by step uh, you are giving commands and then you are just like uh, you are getting confused you are um, getting hundreds of packages to install you have so many commands you are just dumbstruck that how how can I um, uh, install this but in this installer as you can see it's not at all hard to install arch if you observe so while it's installing let me again pause this thing so this is now installed this took quite time but it's okay it takes time now we go back and ArcDI, we are not going for extras, we are going for ArcDI, which is now our base system is installed. We need to, we need to just um, install some other add ons like your desktop environment, or you won't at all find it easy to install Arch. Now, yes, this will gather some stuff here. Now install and run archdi forceforce.net which is recommended is going for the die. Now this archdi is another script which is of uh, installs your whole base and just gives you a ready to use setup for Arch Linux. Now if you don't go for ArcDi and if you restart your computer you will get the same ba base shell where you have to log in and install so many stuff which is completely irritating like the drivers one by one one by one. But why do that? Why even do that when we have easier options? That's the thing. Well, so it is taking some time to install ArchDI. 
also here um also i am telling sometimes arc sometimes arch well you know people call it that way cuz different people prefer their different ways of uh like communicating and we can't tell others what to do this will be taking some time last time cut off my wifi crash so this time i re-ran it and it was fixed so now we go for updates first then in the, we have already installed pacman contrib you can install ea here um which we don't need now but i re highly recommend ea for a uh, package manager cuz it's just awesome for every arc user it's easy it's awesome still let's upgrade uh, uh, with pacman and if you install a ea then it will upgrade with um with ea and it's nothing complicated back now install now this is the basic install menu which is console we go for generic and i don't need nav vim for this but you can if you use vim then i think i won't need much of these yeah so it will install some stuff about 74 mb which is this so i have to again pause it now this is also done now let's go for compression tools i want to um take this all cuz you need it sometimes <coughs> and this is how you do it now network tools now i need them um do i well yes i will do this <coughs> so let's install this now this will take a short time to install sorry for the background noise this this is installing python and all and these are the languages it will use to just make use of these tools now it's done web browser i don't need any command line web browser for now not command line at least recovery tools also no need now back now we go for the system the kernel we have already installed so we go back services yes we install them all it will just give you options this is a good feature of arch that it gives you options you get what you need it's not like the other uh, distros that you get something pushed into them and you have to manually manually remove them if you don't need them but yeah some come with less bloat or some come with no bloat but still unnecessary stuff are not actually needed so this is installing and done well no failed reading file open sh open issue to slow okay so let's try it again yes 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 again now again we try the services thing yeah so only one service is left to install this is installed now so no problem this shan't be a problem actually Now another thing I had to tell you that was also let me again do all the stuff. Now in the services, if you are using an Intel machine, which I forgot to tell you, just unselect this AMD and go for Intel. But I am using AMD chips, so no, I won't. Um, so let's see. There is nothing to do. Okay. Um. You may be wondering that why I am doing this every time. 
well just to show you i'm forgetting some things in one shot but yeah it will happen for you in one shot so you understood the uh, intel and amd code things now file system now here i recommend you you get this ssh client and i and deselect this auto fs cuz uh, when you install this it says that uh, package is not found and this os prober thing this is to be selected and to to select stuff you have to press the space key to select stuff now os prober is selected if you have multi boot if you have dual boot and stuff but no not for this system we don't have it but os prober is necessary when you are multi booting multi booting dual booting whatever you have multiple oss you are dual booting with windows os prober is that time necessary this is done now here these are some warnings which will come but let's just ignore this so warnings keep coming yeah, as long as the system is working we have no issues with this now press any key to continue again so sound we need this all now if you need bluetooth if you have bluetooth or use bluetooth then select this again the space button or no i won't because i don't use bluetooth then for the print section i will just which is the next section i will just install what's necessary i won't install something else if i because i don't have any printer or stuff these will install in a second now we go uh, we are going for print and only these are what you need well if you are getting some eh hp lap then i mean hp printers then give this or we are just going with the recommended ones because they are kind of needed for some tasks even if you don't have any printer or printing purposes so i'm going with the basic installs which is actually needed you can even not go into this but i would recommend that just install the basic ones which you don't which you actually it recommends you now it's done now enable cup service and boot probably yes if you have it now xorg well gpu infos this is my gpu vmware suga 11 well your gpu will be also be given here which is intel or amd or whatever nvidia then here is install well i would recommend select these all i am selecting these all cuz they are quite useful so i select this all and then just proceed this will install packages which are about 84 mb if you know each of them then probably you should be able to classify what you need and what you don't but i recommend that you install all of them cuz all of them are quite useful not going to lie so this is done pro i mean this is nearly done and in the physical uh, system when you install it on a physical hard drive you will see that wifi works faster i don't know why but i have observed that my wifi works faster in physical systems this doesn't happen in the case of this vm because of too many processes running together Okay, so it's nearly done now. And as it does, till ninety-four. Now some quick packages will install about small, small packages, which are and. 
you know they won't take much time so i'm pausing it so that you don't feel bored these are now nearly done now you see it's so uh, easy to install all of this stuff like you don't need to do this manually and just miss half of the things and this is how easy it was now we go for fonts default ones we get them um target not found font bh okay so which targets are not found just deselect them and just uh just proceed okay this is done now now the next one will be choose your fonts if you want some manuals this is highly recommended if you want the microsoft fonts but as i'm doing a light install here i won't uh, i need cascadia code which i like a lot and i need roboto um roboto mono roboto and i need fire code which also i like a lot and jet brains mono i like a lot so these are uh, these all are code fonts basically what i used to write codes but you can go for others like ubuntu font family is great to be honest so we are just installing them these are quite short these are just font packs these are very pretty nice these are pretty nice now we go back now input drivers um synaptics if you have this trackpad then vmware if for uh, <coughs> vm mouse as i am in vmware now we proceed which is quite a short package now video driver video drivers open source or proprietary if you have amd gpu then uh, open source and proprietary for virtual box and nvidia well, so this is uh, this i will select the virtual box and you can go with nvidia if you have a nvidia gpu cuz they have they keep their stuff hidden hidden code proprietary well and here is the amd gpu just select them if you need them but i don't for vmware but i am using an amd gpu so in physical hardware i had to go for that now desktop environment this is something now you have to think about um kde plasma what's it what it is a uh, customizable desktop it's highly customizable it's kind of light and a low on resources i not that low but yeah it's kind of low and it has unlimited customizability and it's one of my favorite desktop environments xfc this is extremely light runs on the slowest computers and is like magic for uh, low end uh, and old comp old computers and laptops now gnome gnome is Um, a very good distro. Uh, I mean, I mean the very good desktop environment. At what? Uh, what said? Uh, it is a little heavy on resources, but no problem for people who are like installing it on eight GB computers and all. Because hmm, also it's kind of big buggy on four GB computers and lower ones. But still, GNOME is not bad. GNOME looks a lot good in. but it's a uh, yeah its customization is also a bit limited kind of if you don't install uh, other tweak tools and all now cinnamon cinnamon is my favorite distro i'm still using it in linux mint and i used it in my physical uh, arch and i am so impressed with it it's so much customizable it was so much it's uh, so much feature full it's like uh, gives you so many uh, packs load in i would go for cinnamon if it was not a vm as i have allocated very less ram to my vm i would not go for any of these and i would go for xfce now mate ubuntu mate um lxqd uh, which is another qt based and 
LXD, GTK3. You can just search about them and see what they can do. I will go for XFC4 here. XFC4 here we install all stuff and it's also light as you can see. Uh, or can you imagine a desktop environment with 45 MB only? How can this? Um, be possible people will say like gnome users or uh, a KD users they will say because KD is about 400 MB and gnome is about something like that but and this is extra light though this looks a bit ugly when you first time boot it it's highly customizable again I mean not that customizable like uh, cinnamon or KD plasma but yeah it's customizable to a suitable extent and customize uh, why am i dragging customizability in everything because you know customizability is giving you a different look it gives you a different feeling else that's why that is the reason and this will install all stuff there are 69 stuff and it will install all and the cinnamon one it is kind of it is like genome but what it does is uh, it is separate but it's kind of like genome it comes with many uh, genome apps built in but still i prefer it over genome because it's light on resources and uh, so much customizability out of the box it looks good too and it's highly good uh, recommended for people shifting from windows to linux uh, except see for good goodies let's download them all okay uh, it's resolving dependencies let's go with the default ones let's download them all as it recommends it now it will take some time so i'm pausing the playback so it's done now our desktop environment now we go for back and again back now display manager well for this is the login screen basically so if you have um, um, LXQT then or LXD then go for this and for KDE go for SGDM if you have GNOME then it's written GDM but as I am none of these I am going for XFC so light DM even for cinnamon it's light DM let's install this now done this was done easily <coughs> now we enabled light DM <coughs> now back applications for this I won't go for anyone but uh, as I am doing a light install but you should if you are a user well office suits there is LibreOffice there is um, others there is office tools calculator and all but I won't go for any of these nor I will go for any <coughs> web browser applications though you can go for chromium you can go for Firefox Opera Vivaldi uh, Midori Midori is quite extra light and K torrent for K uh, KDE and Qubit torrent for QTs and all GTK is there but I won't go for all again and I don't uh, need any Thunderbird or Evolution 2 I don't basically I stay on the website most so yeah I don't use email clients multimedia you can give VLC here you can choose but we won't as I uh, uh, I'm telling you that I won't but that doesn't mean you don't have to if you need these apps just get them like uh, GIMP is alternative for Photoshop and it's quite good I use it for thumbnails and all and dev well VS code I recommend VS code genie that's uh, that is the two I recommend and system well system also you can go for G parted if you need to manage partitions but I won't again pacman GUI I don't really need now back then now back now I will config uh, 
bash where I don't need to go back now accounts I don't need any firewall uh, firewalls and you will if you use want to use the firewall now users add user I would name my my user arch which is me and I will set the same sudo password which I gave for my system now back now sudo us sudo us is our arg yeah this one now we go back again back system d now um this we had already in a enabled system cdl xorge uh, let's do this now we'll generate stuff okay, we don't need um, we don't actually need this now we need this root one we go back we go now this is done now your arch install is done so congratulations now we can go just back back on mu unmount and then we just reboot the system uh, back we reboot the system and then it happens so congrats this was easy this was uh, this was easy this was um this was nice i liked it and for this i will do boot existing os which is my arch yeah this is my arch linux as i'm showing you loading linux linux starting version 248 these all will be shown for the first boot the first boot takes some time so i'm telling this and also this um you know, this boot time is quite uh, fast on the physical hardware in the vm it's not quite fast but in physical hardware it's quite fast well so just pat yourself and just uh, congrats that you have installed arch linux it was so easy it wasn't at all hard why so this was quite fast let me enter my password now I'm th then i'm continuing so it was quite easy right wasn't it easy you just uh, uh, you just selected some options some um, uh, few stuff you waited for some time and now it's booted now this is your arch and this is completely ready wow this is looking awesome let's check uh, check at this now uh, this is so good this is not at all bad this is graphics well so many things are there xfc this is arch this is arch xfc there are many like so there are kde there are other stuff and again i want to congrats uh, congratulate you because good luck and this is where you can explore your system you can learn more about arch and for this video this much well the last video which i made was on the same topic but for some reason um it went uh, it went wrong so i will post this video that's why well i will delete that video and this is quite awesome not gonna lie so goodbye for this video i'll meet you in my next video let's think about what topic we are gonna work on next time